Okay, so in this Ignite, I consider the future of research and uh, focusing the implications to the developing world as well as why our current approach is likely to break down if we don't start to automate and leverage the innovation potential that comes out of it. And science has evolved from a high intellectual activity uh, practiced by a few elite of individuals who use it to share the findings among a few peers through letters and personal communication. And it was not before the 17th century when the first scientific publication appeared. And since then, science has been institutionalized and has been played an essential whole role in every aspect of our society, as we all know. But uh, we all take for granted that uh, uh, our current scientific practices will eventually lead us to progress. And in reality, we should uh, more carefully consider the interplay between science and development. And for instance, uh, the knowledge that's generated in the less developed countries do not take into account their more specific and immediate needs and thus has uh, little or no effect on their economical and social development. And this chart suggests that the rate of innovation relative to size, uh, population size is actually decreasing. And if it's true that po uh, the population is increasing exponentially, and if most of the citizens who are born in the developing world are not taking part in the game, so we have a problem. And to address this problem, uh, we should uh, encourage the new generation of discoverers to actually be acting and advancing technology in the developing and the less developed countries. So what are the current challenges that we have uh, this new generation should address? First of all, scientific publishing has to be open and support uh, a new diverse range of publication types, data, rich media, protocols, and so on. Second, isolation. Uh, the last paper that I co-authored with a profession in Sacramento, and uh, I, we have not met until we've both attended the same conference. So uh, collaboration over the internet helps, but we sh must be ready to take the next step. And above all, the next generation should be ready to work in the both fronts, both in the state of the art driven research and the research that is driven by our social needs. And uh, well, if we are able to solve these challenges, so I envision for the n near term in the future, uh, first that machines will be reading the library, comparing, summarizing papers, suggesting link between findings and thus adding researchers helping us everywhere, regardless of where we are. And on the other hand, researchers will be able to collaborate in open and social research networks crowdfunding their own research projects, not depend more on grants. And uh, finally, the scientific institution will be promoting X like uh, prizes like format contests as we have already seen in the NASA Centennial Challenges and uh, investing in high school and college education, which is essential. And moving to the long term, machines will be performing experimentation, suggesting and designing new experiments summarizing, explaining the results, and participating more actively in innovation by assembling the building blocks in novel and unexpected ways. Researchers will be crowdsourcing research projects, uh, cooperating in unexpected ways as well, and engaging in multidisciplinary research as we never have seen before. And uh, finally, scientific institutions will be essentially huge data centers to analyze and process all the data that's growing exponentially. Our authorship is likely to be assumed by the scientific institutions because I, I, I envision that there are going to be so many scientists authoring the papers. And uh, so uh, consider that we are now in Brazil 2010. Uh, an automated diagnosis lab has just detected a new letter virus. The time is running out. We should uh, make some things. So the DNA is sequenced. This data is sent to, say, Nigeria. A uh, machine there uh, performs analysis in a couple of minutes figure out a new vaccine. This information is sent back to Brazil. And another machine using scientific biology is able to maybe synthesize proteins which are necessary to manufacture, say, 100,000 of samples of these vaccines that should be enough for a first round of immunization. And so, in short, I, what I'd like to say is that 
science is going to be more participatory and uh, automated in a way that will enable us in everywhere in the developing world to participate more actively and to respond to things that threaten us all. Thank you. Summarize it just in a sentence. Okay, what would you say? Yeah, I, I would say that um, uh, exactly what I just said in the next <laughs> slide that science is going to be more participatory and automated. And uh, I believe that when this hap uh, happens, we will be able to really integrate all the developing world, which is currently not taking part into uh, the main findings and the, the current state of the art in research and thus they are not able to fully benefit from uh, the fundamental research that is being coming out and this is going to be something that is going to impact much more deeply the economical and social development. Yeah. Quite sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's all nice and optimistic and I wish it turns out that... Yeah, well, uh, one way to achieve that is by actually decentralizing uh, the way uh, the current scientific societies held conferences and controls everything. The scientific publishers, they are mainly private and, and uh, interest companies. And so I believe that when you open source that, when you provide the tools for crowdsourcing, for uh, open source and collaboration in the internet, we are going to be able to, to, to see a new trend emerging and as we have seen happening with Wikipedia, which has just outperformed in quantity and quality the uh, most, tra most traditional encyclopedias. So I think this is the way to go. Carlos, I hear this summer, open sourcing will change the scientific community, but it impact the developing world more strong. Yeah, sure. Yeah, with the yeah, exactly. you have, you're going to have problems with the budgets. Like the, the, the sure. researcher that got a grant to do something and then he's going to outsource that to someone else who got another grant. So how to manage all that money, it's always going to be an issue. And, and everybody knows that if, if you got a grant or if you are getting endowment by some, some other entity, you better spend all that money because if you, if you had some money at the end of the year, they won't give you the, the same amount of money next year. So I have addressed that when we talked yeah. about crowdfunding maybe it's a, it's a way to go yeah there's already one company who is which is actually doing this right now it's called SciFly and I, I think this is likely to will be likely to see many more companies Again, this is a very optimistic and I yeah. certainly wish it turns out that way all right thank you very much thank you